Hello, my beautiful creative friends. How are you today? I hope you're doing well. I thought this last minute thing where I just wanted to create an art journal piece. I love this technique with Vaseline. It's something that I've done before and I just really like it. So I figured, hey, why not? Let's create and show you like how to do the Vaseline resist technique. It's just really fun. And I really love um, creating with it. I'm gonna be creating in this art journal. It's, well, I have a second one here. I always like having two, so that way I can have this in front of me. It's a five by five art journal. So it's, um, so it's, uh, so it's really like, you know, a good size that I can easily create and it's not like so large. It doesn't take me that long to do these layouts. So I have, as I said, a second one here. And I'll just put this in front of me in the meantime, and I'll show you how to do this technique step by step. And the first thing that I usually like doing is creating a little bit of collage in the background. And the reason why is because I want that collage to kind of stick out from underneath. And to do collage, you can use a variety of things. But today I'm going to be using tissue paper. This is the Tim Holtz tissue paper. Uh, you could use any tissue paper. I think it, now the Tim Holtz comes like this. Um, you can also use like, uh, I have this 49 in market washi tape, which is really thick. I think it's a great thing to do. Um, I just really like uh, using this as well. So I'm gonna try a little, a few pieces. I didn't use it for the original, but I figured, I forgot that I had this. But I thought this is really pretty. I can use this as well. Um, you can use any type of tissue paper. If you cannot buy tissue paper, you can make your own. So for example, I have my own tissue paper with different markings. So for example, things like this, where you can make your own tissue paper, okay? So it basically, you can make any type of design on it. So it doesn't have to be this, but just for the sake of doing it at a good, like with good time, uh, it's easier if I just um, uh, basically do it like this. Now, basically there's reasons why I like uh, using tissue paper. One of the reasons is I like it because I'm gonna actually put it throughout my whole layout and it's going to seal the middle so nothing seeps through, but it also gives a great texture and great design. And um, basically I'm gonna use uh, gel medium or matte medium, fluid medium. There's many different names for it. I have a video where I explain all of those, but this is my favorite one, the Liquitex matte medium. It's really uh, thin, so it just goes on easily. And I am going to, I like applying it with a paintbrush. So I'm gonna pick pieces of paper, uh, pieces from here. I do want these butterflies, I mean, these moths here because they're part of the design that I want. And I'll show you what else. Okay, so I'm going to basically make, put it everywhere. And this is the easiest way to cover a background is to uh, just add tissue paper. You can even save your tissue papers. I do save a lot of the gift wrapping tissue paper. Those are perfect for that. Uh, they really like do well. So, um, so that's something that you can easily use. And uh, maybe hold on, I'm gonna move this a little bit. So now you can also use ephemera. You can use, um, a, what else can you use? There's so many things to use. Napkins, of course, you've seen me use napkins before, so that you can use as well. I mean, there's just so many options, but because I want to do this and I don't want to take this, I don't want this to take like forever and ever. Um, I'm just gonna use one that is already, really has good designs everywhere. It's just easier for the composition. So I'm just cutting around so I have, so it just goes and I'm going to use the extra piece to just kind of cover that extra little bit that I didn't cover. So, yeah, so there we go. Okay. Okay. So, super easy. That's it. Uh, oh, I said I would add a little bit of this. So let me just see if I can add some of this tape only because I feel like it. Just to show you that you can use this. This is like a sticky tape. Almost like a... Um, but I really want this butterfly. So I'm gonna use just a little piece of it, okay? Just because honestly, I'm gonna show you some other techniques. The technique is really cool with um, with um, with the Vaseline. It's honestly one of my favorite techniques to do and it's super easy to do. So 
let's add this um, while it's still wet because even if it is a sticky uh, washi tape, I do want it to make sure that it seals. So I am going to seal it because it's still kind of like paper, okay? But I'm gonna cut, I don't think I need this whole thing. And I'll just save this for another time. Okay, so um, I am still going to seal it because otherwise, um, when I add some some more things on top, it will. Be. So the most important thing always I say is to seal your work because if you're going to add any wet medium on top, you want to make sure that that you have and that it doesn't get ruined, especially if it's tissue paper or paper. So anyways, I'm done with this. I am going to dry this layer. And because this is such a fluid medium, especially my this liquid text one, I find that it's really, uh, it goes on really, like it dries up really quickly. That's what I mean. And then the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to add some clear gesso. And I have all the supplies listed below. So uh, you don't have to worry about, um, you know, trying to figure out what I'm using. Once this is dry, and once your like first layer is dry, which is really important to do between layers, I'm just going to basically add one thin layer of, of clear gesso. And the only reason I'm doing this, and I'm using clear gesso and not white gesso, which I'm gonna I am gonna use white gesso later, but the only reason I want to use clear gesso is because I want all these beautiful images to stay on my background. I do not want to cover them. And you'll see why in a second, because I really want uh, to have, um, to be able to see these really nice textures underneath when I'm using the resist, when I'm doing the resist technique. And you'll see what I mean in a second once I do this. So I'm gonna dry this layer as well. It dries really quickly and then we're good. So for the colors, you have a few options. Now, my favorite things to use are um, for in terms of like watercolor effects are the Lindy's Magical Powders. Uh, these are really my favorite. Sorry, I just wanna cut a little piece here. Uh, but you can just as well use watercolors or uh, any, any type of other powder that you have, anything basically that is watercolor-like. Now, having said that, you don't really need to use watercolors. You can also use fluid acrylics. And I'm going to show you um, a reason. So I let me just go back up a little bit for a second. So I use these, and I almost regretted using the watercolors and not the fluid acrylics. And I'll explain why in a second once I start like adding the color. Okay. Now um, I still feel a little bit of. Uh, a little bit of wetness here, so I want to make sure that it's dry. Okay, and if you ever have like these kind of corners lifting up, that means that it's missing some gel. So just take a little bit of extra gel and just, you know, dry up the corners. So there we go. I think it's just sometimes the corners get lifted. No, nope, that's good. And this one too. Okay, you want to make sure that everything is really dry. Um, so, okay, so this technique can be done with, as I said, any type of uh, watercolor effect, and I'm going to get a really nice paintbrush. Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to use three colors. This is called Just to Be, Just Be Kind Cobalt, and this is actually a flat color. It's not shimmery. I'm surprised, actually. Uh, um, I'm surprised that I picked a flat one, but it's so pretty. This is called, oh, they're all flat, huh, fuchsia fox glove. So basically that's why you can use things like, um, you can definitely use watercolors for this. You don't have to use the, the, um, the magicals. Okay, I need my handy water spray bottle. Oops, and I wanna make sure I'm in, so you can see well. Okay, good. So, so I'm going to just wet this a little bit. I want to wet the background. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of the color. So this one is this called, 
commit to teal, commit commit to it teal. They have really cool names. So, okay. So I'm just sprinkling. And you're gonna see how pretty it is. Now, if you're using just regular watercolors, then you don't have to sprinkle. I'm just trying to avoid having too much on my background. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So I'm gonna add a little bit more blue and you see just, it already turns into watercolor itself. And again, these links are below. If you like these type of really like, you know, powders, you can do that. If not, see how I'm doing that with this? This is with this paintbrush. You just use a watercolor paintbrush and you just create a really nice watercolor kind of effect in the background. So you don't need to have per se these powders to do this. Um, and, Okay, I'm going to just kind of let it, you see, and you see how it's pulling here in the middle. That always happens with art journals. What's nice about it is that the the um, the tissue paper kind of prevents it from seeping in through the pages. It's a really good way of preventing that from happening. Okay, I really like the blue. I'm going to add a little bit of the other blue now. And it's okay if it's still like seeping a lot because I'm gonna add more colors. Now you can create your own watercolors using a like a palette, like and mixing them in the palette. So that's good as well. Uh, let's see. Oh, I love this blue, it's so pretty. Okay, so. And I don't want this to be too, too strong because I still want to be able to see the beautiful moths and butterflies. So you're gonna see that I'm going to be like kind of taking a little bit of it off. But uh, in the meantime, just, just kind of mixing it around. It doesn't really matter. There's no really um, like a huge like rhyme and reason why I'm adding certain color here, certain color there, but I'm just, kind of using this. I'm just gonna soaking up a little bit of the liquid. Okay, that's better. Because otherwise it's too strong and you can't see anything of it. Okay. And just going to, now these baby wipes, I actually save, I'm thinking to do another live where I use these baby wipes. Let's see if that, how, how it happens. I've been saving a few baby wipes for that reason. Uh, because I really like to use recycled materials. So, that helps. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of this fuchsia color because I really like how the purple looks. You'll see in a second what I mean. Okay, so the fuchsia, it really adds like some really nice like effect. And when it mixes with the blue, it turns into like a really beautiful purple, which is nice. Oh, I just realized I should have used, um, a paper behind it. I like doing that. I forgot about that. Let me just put these in now. I always forget. So I use like these papers so to protect the background, but I always forget to protect the edges. Not that I not that I mind if like if they get mixed with the other colors, but still, just in case. Um. So, oh, it's so pretty. Okay, too much in the middle, sip too much. So I'm going to just soak it up. So, I mean, it's it's a matter of playing with the colors. And I what I find is that <laughs> these colors are, the magicals are very intense. Even though you're using such little bit, they're so intense, it's perfect. It's specifically how I like using color. I like when the color is intense and really strong. But if you don't like that, just just a very little bit or buy colors that are less like, you know, less intense, less um, vibrant. But I love vibrant color. And the nice is like they last forever. These like colors, honestly, like no matter how much I use, I still have so much. And they end up coming up with new colors over and over again. OK, so let me just close these so because I've made the mistake of like, you know, blow drying when they're wet and that's not a good idea okay so while i dry this because this will take a few minutes to dry okay 
I want to talk to you about like a little bit about uh, what's going on with me um, because I've been off a little bit if from from YouTube. I don't know if you've noticed. I mean, some of you have noticed because you've messaged me. Uh, but the key is, and I think you guys can hear me well like this. So um, in the past few months have been hard. Um, I commented in the last uh, in the last video, the two two videos ago in a live stream that I did a short one that uh, a good friend passed away. She used to do a lot of, um, oh, I don't want to cry again. Helene knew her, but um, she used to basically um, moderate for my channel. It was weird today, not not thinking of her because I used to call her and say, oh, can you come and moderate for the channel? So it's been hard thinking about, you know, like, you know, kind of remembering her and stuff. So I've been off because of that. I've been off because I really like, you know, life has been busy and I haven't uh, been wanting to create as much. And Today, I just felt like doing a live, but besides the live, um, the reason why is because I'm doing a lot of creativity for myself, a lot of creativity for my health, uh, for my well-being, I mean to say, and that's something that is I'm really passionate about, and before, just because while this is drying, I want to show you, so this is a really important thing, and it's something that started today, I spoke about it last time, and it's, a bit, it's about this, okay, oops. You might not be able to see it that well. Let me just low, lower it down a little bit, make it like less. So I uh, joined this group. It's called um, Love and it's about love and healing. And this specific art journal, it's basically about re reflecting on self-love and how to love yourself. And it's a free summit that is happening right now. It actually started today. And the link is actually below in the, in the description or at the top. I, I put it at the top of the, the chat if you want to join. It's free to join. My, this one class is free starting tomorrow for two days. And, and there's 20 other uh, lay, uh, people that are doing. And it's all about love and healing and, how, and creativity. How to love yourself through creativity is what I'm doing, which is this one. And it's a really, uh, it really helped me get through a lot of things, especially through difficult time. And you can sign up for it for free, or you can, if you want, uh, you can, there is the link. Elaine actually just put the link. Thank you, Elaine. And what it is, is just that if you want all the, if you want unlimited access, basically you want to have the access to all the uh, classes uh, for unlimited, for as long as you want and to watch them at your own time, you can sign up for the, it's, I think it's like $67 and that gives you unlimited access. I think it goes up after the summit is over. So I think February 16th is the last day to pay $67. But if you don't want to pay, uh, you can just sign up for free just and watch every, every day. They release a few of the sessions minus tomorrow. If you want to watch specifically that one and you can uh, go ahead and sign up and watch all the sessions. Okay. So it's, it's really, if, if you have a hard time, if you've been stuck, if you're, if you're like want to work on self, if you want to work on yourself on, or if you want to work on your creativity, even if it's just creativity, um, that is a good uh, a good place to start, basically. It's something that will really help you. This is where I'm going to use the Vaseline. This is what I came for. So this is what you came for, to find out how to use the Vaseline. It's honestly like the best. So if you don't have Vaseline, you can also use, by the way, a chapstick or wax. You can use wax as well, a candle wax. Vaseline works really well, but you could, again, you can use like a chapstick or like, you know, like a lip balm, like that kind of stuff. So I'm going to get the Vaseline and what I'm going to do is I want to spread it in certain areas. You don't want to spread it everywhere. You only want to spread it in the areas where you are going to want the background to show. So for example, um, I really want these butterflies to show the, the moths. So I am going to um, put Vaseline here. Now you want to, know, don't put it exact. I want to kind of have it kind of running. Now it's really hard to see. You're not gonna be able to see. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can, uh, I, was, I think I zoomed out to show you the thing. Oh, that's amazing that you signed up, Elaine. It's, a, it's really, really special. There's all these different things and you can choose which classes to watch. You don't have to watch all of them. So um, 
OK, so I'm going to put some here because I really want this area to show. I want this butterfly as well to show, so I'm going to do that here and this butterfly to show as well. These ones. OK, but I'm not like trying not to put it in like any like specific order because I don't want it to like be exact. I want it to look distressed. I'm going to I want this wheel thing to show here. So or this corner. So I'm going to show it here and I really want some of these music notes which kind of pop up. So that's what I'm going to do. Let's see. I regret it before not putting in the other one that I did. I wish I would have put a little bit more Vaseline. So this I'm going to do this time a little bit more. OK, so I don't want to cover it all because I now I know know where I put and where I didn't. Uh, so <laughs> so that's uh, something that would help. So now this is where uh, this is you. You do have a choice on what you want to do here. Now I use white gesso to add on top. Now, the only thing with watercolors and also with these um, magicals is that they react with anything that is water based, things like gesso, things like gel medium. OK, so if you don't want your color to mix with the white, you don't want it to mix. You need to use something permanent like the liquid acrylics. Oh my God, hold on. I'm trying to open this thing. OK, there we go. So this is just plain white gesso. That I'm going to cover use with a paintbrush, OK? Now you're going to notice what I mean in a second once I start covering. So the white gesso is going to mix with the color. And if you don't want that to happen, as I said, the background should be you should use things like um, liquid watercolors. Now, you're going to see it's funny because where I put the, the Vaseline, you're not going to see any mixture. The Vaseline acts like a sealant between the gesso and the color. But as soon as I go up here to where there is no Vaseline, you can see that the blue starts kind of mixing with the white. And that's OK for me because I liked it actually kind of all mixed together and it looked really nice. However, if you don't want that, just please use uh, uh, liquid watercolors or, or sorry, liquid acrylics or something that is really thin and like liquidy or just take like regular acrylics and water the, water them down. Now I'm going to be covering everything, the whole background, OK? And you'll see why in a second. So. The Vaseline does not dry. That's a great question. Carrie's asking if the Vaseline dry. No, the Vaseline does not dry and you don't want it to dry. You want it to kind of create a sealing effect on the background, but also like a resist to the white gesso. And you're going to see what I mean in a second once I finish putting it all on. So it's really a cool effect. So once I um, finish it. Now I'm going to link at the end. Uh, a video that I did where I used the Vaseline technique with acrylic paint so you don't get this like cross contamination with the colors. OK, so if you want to see uh, a different things, just wait till the end. And um, I mean, for those of you who watch it later, OK, because I can't link it right now until I find it, but I'm going to link it at the end. And it's a really cool technique to do with acrylic paint as well. OK. So yeah, so there we go. Now I have this and the point of this one, as you can see, some of it came through, but that's OK. If you put a thick enough layer, you kind of avoid it. And another thing is that you can use any acrylic paint here. It doesn't have to be white. You could do black, you could do blue, you could do anything. And in the other video, you'll see that I actually use copper to do it. OK, so you don't have to use white now. This is going to take a little bit longer to dry because this layer of white gesso is pretty thick. So I'll just continue talking about um, that class that I'm doing uh, because this is the time to do that. Or if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, so this class that I'm doing with myself, what I did is I took a picture of myself, a picture where I felt really happy. 
And that picture, if you saw me sitting there, it's actually in a lavender field. It was in my during my birthday last year. And my whole family came with me and we came to, we went to um, this beautiful lavender field, my choice, not theirs, <laughs> because I wanted to go, but they kindly came with me, even though it was a bit boring for them. But I felt really happy that they wanted to do something for myself, my kids, my husband. And basically, I chose that picture because every time I look at this art journal page, I am going to remember that happy moment. So when I am in a place where I am not so happy, when it's more difficult for me, um, I end up, um, I can go back and look at this page and not only remember that moment where I was felt happy, but also remember the process of how I did this art journal page, which was very, very helpful for the how I was feeling at the time. And that's something I explain in my session. So as I said, uh, uh, it's really great to just basically watch um, uh, watch that and like be able to even just watch that session, even if you don't sign up for the whole summit. OK, so there's a lot of help for things, especially if you're, you use creativity to work on yourself and your health. It's called I think it's from oops. Oh, there it is. It's already happening. You see, I was just touching to see. And this is what's going to happen. OK, yeah. So what the Vaseline is going to do is going to create that resist technique. And it's really cool. Um, OK, I think it's good. It's pretty dry. So let's start since it already happened here. So I just grab a baby wipe and basically it starts peeling off. It kind of creates like a really cool peel effect. OK, it will only happen in the areas where you have the Vaseline. It won't happen like everywhere. Some, although here it's like peeling. I must have put a lot of Vaseline. OK, there we go. You see, it won't happen there. I can't remove it from here. I'm trying, but it doesn't work. It only happens where the Vaseline is. Must have put a lot of it on. <laughs> and I think I put more than, than I put in the other one. Because the other one, I felt like there wasn't enough. So. And when you clean this, what happens is the, uh, the Vaseline kind of um, gets cleaned up with it, OK? Now for this one, I think I put it, I must have put it here. You see like where this butterfly is. Okay. And I think I put it here. Now sometimes it's remembering where you put the Vaseline. Okay, there we go. And I think I put it here. And then, so it creates like a peeled paint effect, okay? And again, you see how it doesn't let me go wherever I don't want it. I think I put it in this corner of it here. I only wanted it in this corner. Okay. Now, if you think you did too much, which I feel I did. See, it doesn't let me go beyond this. Okay. If I feel like I did too much, I feel like I peeled off too much. I like this idea better. You can always, now that I removed the Vaseline, I can always go back and put some more gesso on top. Okay, let's see. Yeah, see, it's funny. It's removing in some places and not in others. So, um, hold on. Yeah, it's not letting me remove any more. Yeah, here a little bit. So it kind of almost looks like the, the gesso is like a plasticky kind of effect. It has this plastic effect on it. Um, okay. So I like it to look like kind of like it's like ripped effect. I think I took too much off. I think I might add some more gesso here. So yeah, I might have taken off too much. I don't think I put any in the middle here, so that's good. At least I won't remove it there. Um, so I can go back again if you make a mistake like this, although it looks really cool. Um, I can go back and just add a little bit more gesso in those areas where I kind of feel like maybe I should have not put Vaseline on, okay? So you can go back and do this, okay? So don't like worry if you put too much Vaseline like I did. Because in the other one, I didn't put enough. So I'm like, oh, so I felt like um, like it needed some more. It needed some more. But there, now it kind of looks like it's 
all peeled. I really like that. I like this peeling kind of effect. Um, okay, so there you go. You can always fix that. And that looks really cool. I don't know, I like things. So again, you can just like create this effect by just, um, you can fix the effect by adding more. And I'm just gonna dry the gesso so I can show you the next step. Uh, you can use, yeah, you can use brisket. Is that the one you're asking about? It's masking paste. Uh, yeah, you can use masking paste, uh, like the liquid brisket, I think is the one you're asking about. I think uh, graphics makes it. I'm not sure if that's the one you mean. The nice thing about the, the um, Vaseline is that it's not exact. You're going to get this like not exact look. You're going to get like that peel paint effect, which is what I like. I don't know if you can do that with the mask with the masking paste. I've tried um, uh, the frisket. It's not the same. And again, I think I may put too much, but I think I really like how it looks. I like that. Okay, there we go. So there's some Vaseline that still stays, but it's like that. See, so you get like this peeled looking effect, almost like peeled paint. So, uh, but you can do this, as I said, with um, chapstick as well. You can probably use, you know what you could do it with as well is uh, if you have is the, um, what is that called? The wax, the, um, the Tim Holtz one. I can't remember the name. Um, okay. There we go. So I think we're good. So now it's basically just adding more texture and stuff to the background. I like adding like more texture and I like the peel the paint effect. Like I just think it looks cool. So uh, you can do things like stamping or I'm gonna use a little bit, uh, I'm gonna use my stencil. This is one of the stencils I designed for joggles only because, you know, why not? But you don't have to. You could use like a script stencil, you can use anything. This is just a more like adding a little bit of uh, just texture and I don't want a full texture to be everywhere. So I'm kind of going to um, create a little bit of texture on going up, maybe a little bit here. I don't want to cover my, my, my butterflies. And let's see. So I'm just using a silicone brush. It's my favorite. This is the Princeton one, Princeton Catalyst. I don't know if you know which one I mean, but you can use any of the ones you have. I have this palette knife works as well. I just hate when they get stuck on, on my... Um, on my... There we go. And so that kind of adds a little bit of extra texture. Hold on, let me just go back here for one sec. And... I want a little bit more to finish this. There we go, that's good. Okay. So this is basically dry. What I like is that the, everything dries really quickly. So that's what's nice about it. I'm going to use a little bit of a stamping of a stamp. I, this is a Tim Holtz stamp. Any script stamp or any type of stamp would work. And I'm just going to add a little bit of this ledger. And what it does, it just kind of ties everything in. So I just I like doing this uh, and I'm just more doing it in areas where I feel like they kind of connect together. So what you want to do is just kind of stamp and you're connecting those areas that, uh, that kind of had the white and it kind of turns into like the distressed area. Does that make, if that makes sense, I don't know but you can also put it anywhere. But I don't want to put it every single place because then you're just basically stamping everywhere. There's no um, there's no continuation, but I really like really nice. And then I'm also going to um, just edge this a little bit. I want to create a little bit of a border. I like framing my things. So this is just a little bit of the edging. 
that's just like no no if you like doing that you don't have to do this part so yeah so that i like and what else oh yes yeah, so i also added some splatters because i love splatters okay so i added some black splatters and i think i added some white splatters as well but i'm going to show you so i'm just going to put a little bit of black i love using uh bombay ink um it's really it's it's what i like about it it does it's permanent so it creates really nice splatters but you can use anything you have any type of spray okay I just use a paintbrush to do this. So the more layers, the more distressed it will look. Um, <clears throat> I use a Tim Holtz, uh, like basically a saying. Um, okay, I like this one. Shine like the whole universe is yours. So I like that. Okay, so I think I'm gonna use this one. And, um, Okay, so I like cutting my, I like cutting my sayings. I like kind of, I don't like kind of putting them all like at once. I want to cut them. Shine, this should be one word. Shine, like the whole universe is yours. Okay, so. okay there we go. I'm going to use a little bit of gel medium to just glue these because otherwise they don't stick. Uh, okay. <laughs> you don't have to do it the way I do it, but I just kind of, <laughs> this is the lazy way of doing it. And then I end up like trying to put this on properly. I'm just being lazy. Now, I also added more butterflies separately, and I'll show you how. I love doing this as well. I did use, where did they go? Hold on. Uh, some Rabons. So I found some inexpensive Rabons at the dollar store, but these are not. These are the 49 in market just because I wanted butterflies and I didn't get butterflies. But Honestly, like you can go to the dollar store, things like uh, Dollar Tree, and you can find really pretty ones. This was from the dollar store, and look how pretty they are. I was sort of looked really nice actually here, but I didn't have any gold color on it. Uh, and I used it in my last video, so you can see what I mean. Uh, but I'm gonna use these ones from 49 in Market, these butterflies. I link them, I'm linking them below so you can see. Right, so I'm just gonna, so these are Rabons, they're super easy to use and they're really good quality. Actually the dollar store ones were also pretty good quality. And I'm just gonna add them in certain places, just the butterflies themselves. I'm gonna use um, kind of this, just to kind of transfer it. I love how they transfer so nicely. Oops, whoops, I just screwed that up. Why? I don't know. Oh well. I don't know, okay. I don't know. Uh, as I'm saying how good they are, <laughs> uh, that's always happens. That's the Murphy's Law, that when I start saying something, it just doesn't work the way I want it. Okay, let me see. Let me put this one here. Okay, I'm gonna transfer this one. This one hopefully will transfer. Maybe I should just hold it down. I don't know why. It's not transferring properly now that I'm happen. Maybe it's a Vaseline. Maybe there's too much Vaseline on the background, but I didn't put any here. Not sure why it's not happening. It's transferring. Oh yeah, there is Vaseline there. Look at that. That's why it wasn't transferring. Okay. See, lesson learned. You know, when there's Vaseline on it, it won't work. Let's see. Is there Vaseline here? Let's hope this one works. I'm trying to transfer these show you what I'm doing with them and it's not working, of course. Yeah, it didn't happen in the other one. That's a funny thing. Oh, there, now it's working. See, 
it didn't happen in the other one. That's why I didn't even know that this could happen. It's okay, it's all good. Let's transfer this one again, but let's, let's try and do it here. So funny because like it didn't, it didn't at all happen. Now I think I ruined that one. Okay, well, I guess we're not gonna have that one here. Let me try to add an extra. No, it's not gonna work. That's so weird. Okay, let's try here. Will it work? Let's try this one. Because I wanted to show you, maybe I'll do it here. I don't think I have any Vaseline here. Hopefully not. It's so funny because in the other one, they transfer like no problem. Okay, there we go. There we go. So funny. So weird. Because it's not even, there's nothing. There's not even oily stuff here or anything. It's really odd. Okay, well, let's add like this one last one here. I couldn't add the. Okay. No, it will not transfer there even if I wanted to. Oh no, it is. There we go. Okay, so why I wanted these. I wonder if I press, oh no, you see it got ruined in the back. So I must have like, yeah, it must have been like something where I didn't have a choice. Like it just, there must have been some Vaseline on it and it, it wouldn't like, yeah, it won't transfer to that. Oh well. Okay, so you just, I just roll with the punches, right? So that's what, that's what I do. I still like it a lot. <laughs> yeah, Elaine says, everything is a learning process. Yes, it is. And now I just wanted to kind of make it look like it was, um, there were these like, you know, like those butterfly squares, slides, okay? So what I did is I took this like footable marker and first I just added like around, this is a footable pen. I should have, I, I, you know what? I forgot to add this one in the list. I will add it after. And then I, I did like the slides around like, the butterflies themselves, which I thought was cool because it made it look as if like the the butterflies were specimens, specimen slides. Okay, that's what I was thinking of. So yeah, I'm just basically what I like about this pen is it basically goes on on any surface. Okay, so mixed media surface. You can also use um, I have a thicker version of this, which is like um, it's not the same brand, it's a different brand. It's a Faber-Castell, but it's good like that. Like we'll go, I want to do this bigger one. So yeah. Um, yeah, I like that. That's cool. So it's kind of like very um, whimsical, I think. Oh, whimsical I don't know <laughs> so now basically not a lot to do I'm basically done um just want to add a few white splatters as well and I'm going to show you the comparison between the two okay so I'm going to grab uh, again a paint like one of those splatter brushes okay I always find white splatters help as well. And I'm going to add the white one. So I added the black on top of the what on top of the the white areas and I'm going to add the white on top of the colorful area so that way it kind of matches. Oh, and I forgot to kind of frame this butterfly. I think it should be framed. So yeah. So as I said, the Vaseline technique really works on anything that is like water-based because it's oily and it resists it. So it will work with any acrylic paint. It will not work with oil paints, but it will definitely work with gesso, acrylic paint, and watercolors, obviously, and anything that you want to resist. And it's really fun to do. And this is the other one. I mean, it's very similar, but 
a few differences. The color is, I think, more intense here. I think I had more white here. Um, I added more Vaseline, so more of it came out. And if you do want to watch uh, how I created with the Vaseline and with acrylic paints, I'm linking that video right here. And have an amazing day, everyone. Bye.